You might be wondering why there's a chameleon in the thumbnail of this video. A chameleon can change its color and pattern adapting its appearance to match its environment. The chameleon's ability to quickly and seamlessly change its appearance is a skill to be admired. And what I'm suggesting is that we ought to be more like the chameleon when creating our responsive layouts. You've built yourself a header component. Your header has a title on the left, a menu in the middle, and a sign up button on the right. Your header looks good on large viewports, however, when you resize the page, eventually your header breaks. You need a way to add styles on smaller viewports. This is exactly what media queries do. They allow you to target specific viewport sizes and apply styles on them. Resizing the page, we see our header breaks on a width of 1,231 pixels. The title gets displayed on two lines and the button becomes huge. The syntax for adding a media query is at media parentheses and curly braces. In between the media and parentheses, I can specify which media type I want to target. If I say screen, then this media query will only apply styles on screens such as computer screens, tablets, mobile phones, etc. If I say print, then this media query will only apply styles for print media. If I say speech, then this will be mostly for screen readers. If I say all, then this will target all and apply styles to all of the media types. And if I don't specify a media type, it will target all by default. Most of the time, I just don't specify a media type because targeting all is often what I want to do anyways. Inside the parentheses, we can add our breakpoint. Our header breaks on a width of 1,231 pixels. So inside the parentheses, I can say max width 1,231 pixels. Here, I'm using max width, but another option instead of max width is min width. They behave differently though, and understanding both is very important. Take this title for example. It's just an H1 of Hello World. If I define a media query and use a max width of 500 pixels, this will target screens below the breakpoint of 500 pixels. Inside the curly braces, I'll select the H1 and give it a color of red. So now, for example, when I resize the page down, because I'm using a max width, our color of red will be applied once we go below 500 pixels. If I change max width to min width, it does the opposite. Instead of targeting screens below the breakpoint of 500 pixels, it'll now target screens above 500 pixels. So when I resize the page up, a media query with a min width of 500 pixels will apply our color of red once we go above 500 pixels. If you design your website desktop first, then you would use max width to make your website responsive on smaller viewports. If you design your website mobile first, then you would use min width to make your website responsive on larger viewports. Back in our header example, inside the curly braces of our media query is where we can select elements and apply styles on them. Looking at our header, we see our title, our menu, and our button are too large for this breakpoint. When I reach this breakpoint of 1,231 pixels, what I want to do is change the font size on alt tree to something smaller. I can select the title by its class name of header underscore underscore title. The title has a default font size of 2 rem, so to reduce it, I'll give it a font size of 1.5 rem. I'll select the links by their class name of header underscore underscore link and give them the font size of 0.8 rem. The button shares the same font size as the links, so instead of selecting the button underneath the links, what I can do is add a comma after header underscore underscore link and select the button by its class name of header underscore underscore button. By adding a comma like this in between both class selectors, I can make them share the same font size. Looking at our header, when I resize the page down to 1,231 pixels, instead of our header breaking, we see the font size on the title, the links, and the button being reduced. Now that we understand how media queries work, we can keep resizing the page down to see when our header breaks again. We see our header breaks on a width of around 925 pixels. To fix it, I added another media query with a breakpoint of max width 925 pixels. Inside the curly braces, I added the styles I wanted to fix the header, and I did the same again at around 600 pixels. Using media queries allowed me to define styles for various different breakpoints, and now our header is finally responsive. On our header component, we added media queries whenever the layout on the header broke. It is common for developers to build their entire website and then add media queries whenever the layout on their components break. However, there is an issue with this. 
Take this website, for example, it looks fine on the surface, but to make this website responsive, I had to use a grand total of 16 breakpoints. 16! That's a lot. And had this website been any larger in scale, I most certainly would have needed to use many more media queries, maybe triple. And the reason I'm using so many media queries is because I'm creating them whenever the layout on my components break. This might seem like the logical approach to making a website responsive. However, let's now take a look at an alternative solution. This is the portfolio website from my Build a Portfolio Website video. To make this website responsive, I only had to use a total of six breakpoints. I'm using six media queries for this website, and on the other website, I was using 16. Huge difference, and both websites are similar in size. They're both small, single-page websites. The reason I can use so few media queries on this website is because instead of creating them, the moment a component breaks, what I did was use six predefined media queries and made my components responsive on them. As you can see, we've got a media query for extra small screens, one for small screens, one for medium screens, large screens, extra large screens, and extra extra large screens. Also, I'm using MinWidth here because this website was created mobile first. By using predefined media queries, I was able to make this website responsive using only six breakpoints. Furthermore, using this method unlocks a new type of container. If I open the developer tools on my portfolio website, we see each section has a container utility class. On the right side of the developer tools, I can scroll down slightly to find the container utility class. I'll give it a border of one pixel, solid, red. We see this added a red border around each section. The container utility class is important for a couple of different reasons. First, it makes sure that all of the sections are properly aligned. And secondly, look at what happens when I resize the browser. The moment the viewport touches the border, the container responsively shrinks. It only shrinks when the border is touched. If we compare this to the older website, we see nothing is aligned and when I resize the page, the containers are constantly shrinking. The containers on this website were created using the popular width of 90% and margin of zero auto. This container is super popular, but I find it less elegant than my alternative solution where the containers only shrink when the viewport touches it. The portfolio website is a mobile first website, so whatever I add outside of the predefined media queries is for default styles and styles for smaller viewports than our first breakpoint of extra small. Our container on smaller screens than our first breakpoint of 475 pixels has a width of 100%, a margin left of auto, a margin right of auto, a padding left of 0.5 rem, and a padding right of 0.5 rem. You could instead use the shorthand margin property and set it to zero auto, but because this is a utility class, explicitly setting a zero on the top and bottom could result in not being able to add a margin top or bottom to an element that shares the container utility class. This is why I don't use the margin shorthand here. Then, inside each media query, the container class is selected and given a max width with the same value as the one given to the min width of its breakpoint. This is what makes our container shrink only when the viewport touches it. Looking at both containers, the one that I am advocating for does require more code to set up. However, in my opinion, it's the superior container. This container is the mobile first version of the container. If you're looking for the desktop first version, this is how it looks, but for convenience, I'll also have it in the description of the video. On my header, I replaced the old container with my new and improved container utility class, and I also made my header responsive based on my six predefined media queries instead of making it responsive whenever the layout broke. And there you have it. You can now create responsive layouts like a chameleon. If you want to see these techniques in action, in a real-world example, I have a video on my channel where I built an entire portfolio website using the container utility class and the six predefined media queries. I also recently created a Discord server. The link to it is in the description of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.